Okay, how do I start? Hello loves, hi, hello, we're gonna have some fun tonight. Hi ladies, hi everybody. Can you guys see me? Can you hear me okay? Um, I should, so let me see, let me see, let me see. Let me, um, let me get used to this a little bit here. Hi you guys, nice to see you guys. Now, uh, I wanna see where I can open up a chat. What is happening? Okay. Oh. Okay. Sorry guys, just gonna, I, just, I gotta, oh, here's the chat. Here we go. Um, okay. Did you guys see the chat? Everything is good. Okay. Um, so can you guys, do you guys just wanna say hello in the chat? just so that I know that the chat is working for you. Hi, hello, good, good, good. Okay, um, so, uh, no. I know we had more, more than this that was signed up. I don't know if there's people who are, who signed up, who decided that they're not quite gonna show up or if somebody, um, is supposed to be waiting somewhere. So what do you guys wanna talk about? So this is a place where you can ask me your questions and, and we're gonna like dive deeper into the stuff that is on your mind. What would you guys, what, what are we gonna get into? What do you want to talk about? What is on your mind? What are we gonna get into? I'm like a magic eight ball. Um, I'm like a magic eight ball. So I definitely need your question to get going. Here we go. I've had one, I've had one relationship, 16 years, no marriage or kids, now single three and a half years. I haven't had a relationship since. Terrible luck with dating apps. Um, Yes, okay. So, what is your question? Give me a question. <laughs> Trisha. I know, I'm gonna make you think, girlfriend. I'm gonna make you think. Good, we got more ladies coming in. Welcome, ladies. Welcome, welcome. Welcome, ladies. All right. Um, how do I date multiples while trying to find my one and not get attached, too attached or needy? Love this. All right, Trisha, should I pull you in? You wanna come in, my love? All right. So I am unmuting you. Do you see, is there an unmute? Okay. Yeah, I should be unmuted. There you are. All right. So this is a really, really, really great question. Um, let's talk about what makes us attached to somebody and specifically attached to somebody that we don't know, right? Because like our current way of dating 
is kiss to see where it goes. And what happens is we get attached to someone before we actually know who they are. And then we end up, um, you know, going through a honeymoon phase and we're like, oh, this person is great. And then the honeymoon phase wears off and we go, oh, this, this, is, this relationship is work or this relationship kind of sucks or, um, you know, I feel like I've lost my independence or it's not working out the way I expected it to. It's definitely not like it was the first three months. Um, so, you know, really what causes that, that attached needy phase is the kiss. It's the kiss that does it. So if you want to avoid going into the attached needy phase, what you want to avoid is the kiss. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I guess my counter to that mm -hmm. is how else do you know? I mean, you know when there's a physical attraction. Yes. How do you know that there's like an actual chemistry there? Ah, so, so the phys, so that physical attraction is chemistry, is it not? Yes, but I mean, what if you get like you start getting into your feels and they're a terrible kisser? <gasps> so here's I'm terrified really of going three months and then like, oh my god, you're a terrible yes. kisser. <laughs> so the first time I kissed my husband, he was a terrible kisser. Like so I don't know about you, but I'm not an all tongue kind of girl. Right. Um, you know, and, but you get the kissers that are like all tongue. Right. And he was an all tongue. And I went and I, I, I pulled, so here's what you do. You've been with other sexual partners, right? Mm -hmm. And they've gone down there. Some have. <laughs> and, and you've, and you've, have you given any direction with down there? Um, Honestly, so my experience is minimal because I was in a really, really long relationship. Um, I haven't had many, I actually haven't had any that I had to give any direction to. I've been very lucky with that. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. So. Um, well, here's how you give direction if you need to. And let me tell you, it's okay to get to three months with a great person who's a bad kisser. It's much worse getting into a relationship with a good kisser who's a bad person. So you, yeah. you have to put it into your mind that it's okay to teach somebody how to do the physical things if their character is in the right place, their heart is in the right place, your fundamental values are lined up, and that chemistry that you felt in the beginning sustained itself over three months and didn't die off. So that's how you know it's not a flash in the pan. If you're like, the more time you spend with them, the more affectionate you feel towards them, the more affection you show. And no kissing doesn't mean no touching, by the way. So you should be showing affection because it doesn't matter what you say to a man. What matters is what you do. And if, if he makes you feel happy and warm and fuzzy, you are touching him and you're, you're like holding his arm, you're holding his hand, you're cuddling up into his neck. Um, you know, it's the more affection you feel, the more affection you can give. The great thing about not kissing is instead of kissing the lips, you might kiss the little spot here right beside the eye, which means you're really building intimacy. Um, so getting to three months and having that first kiss suck is okay. All you do is you, you pull back just, just a little bit. You, you break the kiss, but not the intimacy. So you stay close, you keep the moment and you just break back. You just hold, you go a little bit and you look him in the eye and you go, let me kiss you. And he's going to be like, what? And you're going to, trust me, I've been there. He's going he's gonna to go, what? And you're going to say, just close your eyes and open your mouth a little bit and let me kiss you. Let me show you how I like to kiss. And this is how you teach them to let you show them how to kiss. And I've done this before. And let me tell you, there's, I remember one guy who was like, um, I had to say it like, like a few times, right? Cause he kept like, oh, sure, blah, right? And I'm like, no, 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 no. Let me kiss you, let me show you. Okay, blah, blah, blah. So like there was one I had to like do it like five times basically. But a man who wants to be with you 
wants to learn what it takes to be with you and they like direction like they'll they'll take it if you say you know you, you look a lot younger if you shaved your goatee or i really like cologne can you can you let me pick a cologne for you men who are men their outside doesn't matter to them if 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 there's something more appealing to you a different style of clothing or a different way of of wearing their facial hair more often than not they don't care to change that because you're not asking them to change who they are on a fundamental nature you're not asking them to you're not asking a hard-working man to work less right so they're open to suggestions they're open to change they're open to modifying to please you because they want to to have the space by your side. And the most telling way to know if a guy wants to be your man is when he asks you, what are you looking for? Okay. I feel like that question comes up pretty quickly though. At my age, I'm late thirties. So I feel like that pops up almost always on the first or second date. And yeah. if we align, we continue. But then, like I mentioned in a question earlier, I've been talking to a guy for two months and we've only seen each other twice. And he's like, I'm very busy, but right. texts me every morning and night, calls me every day. Right. What is he busy so, doing? Um, so he has his full-time job and then he owns a business with his uncle on the side um, and uh, heating and air conditioning. Mm -hmm. So he's doing that. So I can understand, but my counter to him was, there are a lot of hours in a week, you know, why can't we get lunch or yeah. take a walk or something? And he's like, I just don't have the time. So it's like, we're going every once every five weeks seeing each right. other. Um, 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 um. And it's crazy because everything else aligns. Everything that we both want is the same. He's a great person. It's just the time. So I don't know if I just cut the cord and keep going. Um, I want to kind of go back to when you say that you go on dates and, and the question, what is it that you, I love that your kitty cats in your background. Um, I have two of them. And that's so cute. Um, that you're saying that they're asking really quickly, what is it that you're looking for? Are you sure they're asking like, cause there's a difference between intent. Like what is your intent? What's your reason for sitting at the table, whether it's for a hookup or a long-term relationship or what, what are you looking for in terms of a partner? So that's like, you know, what are the values? What are the characteristics? What are the life plan? Like, do your life plans align, right? You're like, like the couple goals that you want to have. So that question can be taken one of two ways. And I'm wondering if what they're asking first is, are you here for a hookup or for a relationship rather than asking what kind of man are you looking for? Do you know? Um, I always ask the question, whether it's through text or through the dating app before we even meet what they're looking for. Cause if they're just looking for a hookup, it won't go any further with me. Got it. Um, so when they say they're looking for a relationship or marriage or, you know, their person, whatever, then that's when I, I go forward. Okay. Um, and then, and then, yes, I've been asked, what are you looking for in your partner? Okay. What's your answer to that? Um, Oh, it's a long list. Uh, I, I oh, it's a long list. Um, I want somebody that's honest. That's probably my biggest thing. Um, my last relationship I was cheated on. Okay. So I just, I want I want the honesty and that obviously builds trust and credibility with people. And, um, I want, you know, somebody that wants a similar life that I do. I still want children and marriage. Um, you know, I have, things like animals. I, are you okay having pets? Like I can get down to the nitty gritty because I, I know exactly what I'm looking for. And yes, I, I can sway a little bit, you know, depending on who the person is, but as a whole, I know what I want. I just, I want somebody that I can trust that's going to be there and is really going to be my friend. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. Okay. I like that. I like it. Um, so how do I date multiples, trying to find my one and not get too attached or needy, um, doing the no kissing for three months dating rule, that it, it really does give you the ability. So no kissing means no kissing and no sleepovers. Um, and so it really does give you the ability to, to step back. 
uh, and fully assess, right? And over a period of time. And anybody who can't withstand that period of time, if you can't make it through three months and the biggest obstacles, you, you got to get to know me, then we probably can't develop a relationship. Um, back to this guy who only has the ability to see you two times in two months. Um, my husband worked 80 hours a week running his own business and uh, also co-parenting his children. Um, he made time. He made time every Wednesday evening at nine o'clock, right? Uh, and that was his treat to himself. His treat to himself was spending time with me because he saw so much value in my companionship. So to answer your question, should you stay or let it go? You know, basically in those first few months, those first three months, people are giving you an idea of how important you are to them, right? And so if he's not making time, if he's not carving out an hour a week for you to get to know you, then to me, that isn't enough. And the best predictor of future behavior is past behavior. So he's, for the past two months, he's making you so low on his list of priorities that you get how many hours every five weeks? Two or three. Yeah. Um, and so that's what you can predict, right? That's the past two months. You can predict that for the next two months. And, and you know, my brain kind of, have you guys kissed at all? Yes. Plus, plus? Yes. <laughs> so, you know, I'm wondering why, why there's, why there's this massive separation? Um, you know, it, it like, why this massive separation? And to me, there's just red flags and red flags and red flags. Um, so I would not build anything in my mind up with this person. Okay. Uh, you're on dating apps? Oh, Jennifer says. Yeah, I've been on basically all of them except for Tinder. <laughs> Keep trying. So are you signed up for my dating class? I'm not. You should sign up for that. I want to get you guys into manifesting on there. Um, so it's uh, August 26th at, um, what is it, 7 p.m. or August 27 at 11 a.m. So you can pick a, the time that suits you best. And, you know, I really get into, like, uh, I get into putting your brain in the perfect space to start a relationship. Um, fine-tuning your antenna, clarifying what it is that you want so that it pulls it in a little bit faster. Um, manifesting can really work if, first of all, you believe in it and you work diligently at it. So manifestation in conjunction with your own forward movement, so not giving up on your efforts as well, I think can bring it about a lot faster. Uh, so I'm looking at Jennifer. Jennifer says she can't hear anything. Oh, oh la la. Okay, well, all right, my love. Um, I'm gonna let you go. I'm gonna move on to someone else here. Um, by the way, if you did wanna sign up for the, the dating class, there is a link in the link tree in my bio. It says NMA course. I, I need to change that to dating course because I keep calling it a dating course. Um, but it's the No More Assholes dating class. Got it. Okay, thank you, love. So Marie says, uh, I love hearing your advice, your kind words. I feel the same problems. So I've been researching my, if you can make this shorter, that'd be fantastic. Um, what is your question? I need your, okay, here we go. Um, as far as the I love you goes, do you feel like I'm overreacting that he is scared and confused to confront his own feelings? Um, Uh, dating for six months, yet to say I love you. Guys, let me ask you this. I want you to say this in the chat. When do you think is too soon to say I love you? And when do you think is like late to say I love you? Yeah, Katie says you can't put a time on it. 
I feel it best when the person is ready. So for me, it would be, you know, anytime after three months. So six, whenever you feel it's right, I just worry, of course you would. Um, before six months is too soon. So yeah, um, after three, like, and I, like, let's, you know, I would say like, I think six months is a nice time because I would recommend the no kissing for three months rule. So that's three months to get to know each other. So, you know, let's, let's just, let's just count in those three months, even though you, you probably kissed before three months and the count in another three months of, of knowing each other beyond the honeymoon phase. So the honeymoon phase lasts about three months regardless of whether or not you're kissing, it's just the chemicals in the kiss put your mind into a very um, high state, essentially. You really do become high on your chemicals and it just takes over your brain and it puts you in a state where you think you know everything you need to know, even if you don't. Um, and so you, the honeymoon phase, it's, it's very, you go into what I call best behavior syndrome, uh, even if you're not kissing. So again, like your chemicals do jack up in the honeymoon phase, but adding the kiss chemical to that, it's, it's kind of like the difference between having a beer and having a 12 pack. So, um, it, it really does put you over the edge. So six months is, is getting to around the time where you should know each other enough to carry about each other enough to feel like you were falling for each other. Um, so let me see, can I pull you in, Marie? Marie, can I pull you into a conversation here? Or would you rather stay on chat? Marie, can you hear me? Yes, I'm talking to you, girlfriend. <laughs> Can I pull you into a conversation or do you want to stay on chat? Pull you in? Okay. All right. So I just clicked the ask to unmute. So you should be able to talk now. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. So Marie, um, what does he say to you about his feelings? Um, he doesn't really like to talk about his feelings. I feel like I have to bring it up or address it most of the time and kind of just like he says he's uh confused I, I i think he does care about me i think he just has a hard time expressing it like vocally okay how does he show that he cares about you um i think like he does a lot for me i think he's always like very supportive like when i need to see someone or like he's also very like physically affectionate like he's always like hugging me so I think like I, that's where love languages come into play. Have you guys done a love language quiz? I've tried to get him to but he like is not really into it but he does say that his love language is physical, physical affection so I can see that like that's how he probably shows his love. Okay. Um, so let me ask you this. Do you get a sense that he's loyal and devoted? For the most part, I do, yeah. Okay. When you say the most part, what are the pieces that are missing? Um, I, like, he doesn't do anything personally, but once I did notice he had, like, we were talking and he was on his phone and I saw dating apps on his phone and I confronted him about it eventually. And he said that he had like recently downloaded them, but um, I never really made it into a big thing. We did talk about it and I think he has taken steps to help me like trust him, but it's still hard. Are you guys like, are you guys official? Yeah, we've been official for like six months. Okay, so what made it official? How did you guys like make your relationship official? Um, we like, it, it, it was like a series of conversations. I personally like dating the person longer before I get into a relationship, but I could tell that he really wanted to be in a relationship. So after a few conversations, I, I like compromised, although I don't feel like I was 100% certain I mean, I did want to be in a relationship, but I 
like getting to know the person more before I like jump into a relationship. Yeah. Good, good, good. And so you guys had some conversations and like um, you said, you said, I want to be in a committed relationship. And you said, I want to be in a committed relationship with you. Okay. Yeah. Good. good, good, good. Let me ask you this. How long are you willing to wait for an I love you? I'm not sure. Like, I think I'm willing to wait as long as it takes. I just like, it is something that I do worry about like a lot. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I don't know if it's just me getting in my own head. Yeah, um, or like maybe subconsciously like comparing my situation with like other people like around me. Uh, you've met his friends and his family? Um, yeah, I have. And he introduces you as his girlfriend? Yes, he does. Okay. And do you guys talk about the future? Um, not really. We don't, like, we'll, we'll talk about like, things we kind of want to do in the future like um but nothing like very serious no right so no no future planning yet yeah not really okay i mean it's still early-ish too um loving and kind when i try to communicate about his absence when we are apart he gets upset so what kind of absence are you talking about um, just like when we're not apart, he's not very like communicative. I like don't think it's a huge deal because I know some people are like that, like they're living their own life, and I think that that's like important to have in a relationship, like boundaries. But yeah. he can be like to me, it feels like sometimes he's, he's very like absent, or I'm not sure. I've tried to communicate it to him or like ask for some more reassurance from time to time, but he doesn't seem to like see the value in that. Okay. And how much time do you guys spend together versus time spent apart? Um, we'll spend like a day together and then we'll be apart for like three or four days. Okay. And what keeps him busy? He's kind of in the middle of moving right now and he's helping his, uh, he's, he's moving with his dad and his dad has a lot of stuff, so he's been like packing for months and getting rid of stuff and sorting through his house. But um, the last few months, he doesn't do a whole lot. He does have like hobbies that he likes to partake in. Like he does like playing video games and um, he reads a lot, but like he like hasn't been working or going to school, so. Does he plan on it? Yeah, he just started school this week. What's he taking? He's taking all business courses. Okay. What does he want to do with that? I'm not really sure. I think he wants to work for a firm. Um, but I think he's also not completely sure yet. Yeah. So it sounds like he's still figuring himself out. Mm -hmm. And that's probably creating some anxiety, some confusion. Um, does, you know, are you like his first serious girlfriend? Um, I know he's been in like um, serious relationships before, but I think that I am like the first like serious relationship. Yeah, because he says like he hasn't had to have these conversations in the past. Right. I wonder how long his longest relationship has been. He said that uh, his longest relationship was like four and a half months. Yeah. So this is the longest one yet. So he's entering new territory with you. Um, and, and guys do tend to tread more carefully than we do. They do tend to go slower than we do. And here's the thing, like, we can go as slow as they do, but once we start kissing, it has an effect on our brain. And it sends a signal to our brain that we've completed a vetting process, we've observed all these males, we selected the best one, and now we are all in. And so the kiss chemical really puts the female brain all in, but it doesn't have that same effect with the male brain. And so and this is why 
we, we kind of, we, you know, we watched like the bachelor, right. And, and they kiss and she's like, he's the one. And he's like, I'm still checking things out. I'm not quite there. Um, so we find more often than not that women tend to fall, you know, I'm not going to, I'm going to air quote this because you're not really falling in love until you actually know somebody inside out and you fall in love with their insides. Um, but we, we fall faster for men because the kiss chemical is just, it's, it's mother nature's signal that we have chosen the best mate and it's time to make a baby. And so it really hyper focuses us on this one particular person and we start building a life with them. And it's like, you know, how come you're not loving me as much as I'm loving you? How come you're not planning a future as much as I'm planning a future with you? And it, it really kind of gets us way ahead of them. And then they're still like, hey, I'm still kind of figuring things out and getting to know you. And then we get upset because they're not beside us. They seem to be behind us emotionally. They, they haven't caught up yet. Um, so the only thing really with this is time will tell, right? Um, mm -hmm. But if you do want to give this the best chance possible, then your best, what you want to do is make sure that you're creating a, the type of environment where he feels emotionally safe. And that's, you know, when he feels like it's safe to talk about his feelings, then he talks about his feelings. When it's safe to talk about his plans, then he talks about his plans. Um, and the way that we create emotional safety is by not always backing them up. Like, you're not giving me enough time. You're not giving me enough communication. You're not saying I love you fast enough. If we fill our time up, so which means that we pull back from them and we go, you know what? That's you. I'm not going to be in your space. I'm not going to be up on you. I'm going to be in my space doing my thing. You want to spend time with me? You want to see me? You want some of me? Come and get me. And this is where it starts really creating that emotional response in them because when we pull back, if they want us, they miss us. And when they miss us, they come fetch us. Um, so if we pull back and we fill our time up, which means we're not demanding of them. The one who really wants to be with you is gonna make time and he's gonna be with you. He's gonna, he's gonna make sure that he's creating that with you. Um, so what I would suggest you do is make sure that you're filling your time up and not asking him for time because it's so it's so telling if you stop asking for something and they don't offer it because they want to give this to you if we keep asking for stuff and they keep giving us to us because we're asking it instead of because they want to they don't really get a chance to grow their feelings and this is also how you keep a lazy guy lazy and if this is a selfish short-term thinker and i'm not saying this is but there's ways to understand if somebody's a selfish short-term thinker who's just in it for what they can take or a generous long-term thinker who's in this for what they can exchange with you as a partnership so when we pull back and we fill up our time and we're not we're not asking them to entertain us or make us feel better because we are entertaining ourselves with our passion and we are making ourselves feel better through meditation and fulfillment and happiness. Um, they like to come into that bubble because this feels really safe. And if good men are hardworking, so hopefully he puts that hat on. And if he gets into hardworking mode and he sees you in hardworking mode, he's like, we have so much in common because both of us are so busy conquering the world. And so again, that pulls him in closer because similarity creates um, affection, right? We seek what's familiar, which by the way, can be really bad for us because we'll seek what's familiar even if it's bad for us. So if what's familiar is crap, then we keep going to get crap. But, you know, like really does attract like. So if ultimately, you know, Maybe he's giving his brain a mental break right now, but if ultimately he does have a good work standard and, and he does clarify what it is that he wants in his life and he sees that you have a good work stand, like good work ethic and you're clear about what you want and you're not, you're not coming at him, you're standing back here going, I'm cockering my world because I'm a queen. And he's like, damn, I want to be the king by her side. Then he's like, whoop, let me get into this space and let me, let me pull at her a little bit because I miss her and I love her. So you can try that and see how that works. 
Thank you. That actually is really helpful. I yeah. think that, that <laughs> that's something I can do and I think it will work. Yeah. And, you know. Good, good, good. Yeah. Fill yourself up. I love this. Thank you, my love. Thank you. Okay, let's see. Um, so we got, we got Katie, my boyfriend will message me when he's away and say really sweet things, how much he misses me. Okay, love this. Sabrina, hi Chantal. My friends and I decided to break up together for two years. We both felt suffocated, needed space. We both went through a lot. Took our insecurities out on each other, yes. Um, Sounds like a lot of anxiety going on here. Are you guys reading the chat as well? Do you guys want me to read it out loud or are you reading it on your own? Do you want me to read it out loud? No. <laughs> I see. Katie's like, no, 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 I got this. I read this. It's all good. Um, separate home, risk rooms, do our own thing. Oh, support each other. Thinks we shouldn't be together, but he says he still loves me, wants to be friends. What steps should I be taking to try and see if I can get him back? Um, so what you need to do here, Sabrina, is the opposite of what pushed him away. So what pushed him away was all the stress and anxiety that was going on in your life coming through you guys and vomiting into the relationship. Now, the opposite of that is being in a calm, peaceful, happy space. So that is what you need to cultivate within yourself. And then he looks at you and goes, wow, this isn't the same person. And if he still loves you um, and this change takes place, then what happens is he starts to see you in a new light and, and that, that newness and like, wow, like this isn't, this isn't a problematic person anymore. I don't, I don't want to call you problematic. It's just the behaviors are problematic, right? And in his mind, the behaviors create an association to the person. Like my husband likes to scare me and it makes him double over in laughter. And I don't necessarily like being scared, but I let him scare me because I let him laugh. And what happens when people laugh is it releases all these good chemicals and it makes them feel good. And he associates the good feeling to me. So I feel good. So I'm a, I'm a good feeling person, right? But if you're just vomiting negativity into the relationship, then you and their mind become problematic. And they're like, I need to get rid of the problem. And if the problem is wrapped around a person, it's like, I need to get rid of the person. So when the person is no longer problematic, then they no longer have a reason to push us away. So we need to turn into the opposite of what we were. And let me tell you, like, um, depressed, vomiting, insecure. I was all of those. And so I was a problem and my husband was pushing me away and he was slowly but surely exiting the relationship. And what I did is I turned myself around and I put myself in a position where I could say to him, I am happy and present in the moment and looking towards the future with optimism. And it is work and it is daily work to do this. Um, and it starts with meditation, Sabrina. It 100% starts with meditation. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this for all you guys who are not meditating yet. Um, I have a YouTube channel. I make meditation easy. Do not think you need to sit there for 10 minutes and not think anything. We are women. We have a busy brain. It comes with the, you know, we have uh, the female brain is, as I've, I keep forgetting about trans, because trans is a female brain in a male body. The female brain is a busy brain. The thought patterns, like men, the thought patterns happen within the same hemisphere, think and do. Women, it's think, consider conversation, consider some more, more conversations, and then do. So it really is different the way our brains function, and you know the imagination is nuts. So you will think a lot. It's not about how much you don't think, it's about how many times you bring your focus back. And every time you bring it back, you shrink the part of your brain that creates stress, fear, and anxiety. That's the amygdala. So go to my YouTube channel, find my Let's Meditate playlist, listen to track number two with headphones, sit in a chair, close your eyes, listen to the music, pull your focus back. Every time you realize you're off in thought, do this at least once a day. So minimum 10 minutes a day on average, you will reduce your anxiety. Um, Sabrina, I do recommend you get fixed that shit because you need to be able to say to him, I've read this book 
and it's changed my perspective and it's changed my plan. It's changed the way that I want to be and the way that I, I, like, I can clearly see now how I want to be because guys, I paint a picture in this book. I put the image in your mind when you can conceive it, you can achieve it. So you're going to see where you want to be. You're going to see what it takes to get there. And you're going to go to him and you're going to say, my perspective has changed. And because my perspective has changed, my desire to change my behavior has changed. And in fact, these are the behaviors that I'm doing that are new. And these are going to make me a better person and a better partner. And I hope that this can bring us together. So I hope that helps Sabrina. Love, love. What if he isn't ready to talk? That's, that's okay. You, we infect each other. So do you know when you think about a girlfriend and then a minute later you get a text message from her or you think about any friend and a minute later you get that text message? Um, so it's because we are transmitting. It's because we are infecting. We don't necessarily have to talk in order to communicate. So maybe he's not ready to talk yet, but your change will still translate. It will still be evident. It will still infect. It will still vibe off of you and he will pick up on it. Oh, Aisha, Sabrina, sounds like my life. My boyfriend and I are almost two years in. The last six months have been tough. I started doing Chantal's suggestion. My boyfriend still loves me. It seems like he's starting to come around and he's starting to soften. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, you're so welcome, Sabrina. Um, so I hope you read what Aisha said. It is, it is so true. If, if there's a part of him that is still plugged in, you doing these changes in behaviors does have a ripple effect and it does infect them. And slowly but surely, it breaks down the, the doubt, right? Because where they're at is I doubt this can change. And that's why they're ready to go because they don't see hope. They don't see a light at the end of the tunnel. But when you change your behaviors, the doubt starts getting cracked because the longer you stay with that consistent change of behavior, then the more it cracks through the doubt because the best predictor of future behavior is past behavior. So the more time you let elapse, being consistent with the change, consistent, consistent, and the change has to be a gift. You give and you release the outcome because if there's any pressure for him to change, he's like, this is what it was before. She's always looking to me and I always have to be the solution. I always have to be the one, right? So if you do the changes and you give them as a gift and you release the outcome and you tell yourself, no matter what, I'm good because the changes that I'm doing make me a better person for whatever relationship I'm going to be into, whether it's with my ex or, or, you know, if this relationship ends, this needs to be your mantra. If this relationship ends, I will be okay. I am leveling myself up, which means my next relationship will be a level up too. So regardless, I will be fine. Um, so you do the change, you release the outcome, you do it because you need to, you do it because you need to not be doing the same thing into your next relationship. The point I'm at, yes, Katie. Good, good, good. Um, Aisha, Aisha says, I didn't like in the beginning when my boyfriend would spend time with me while trying to build his fish business. <laughs> I love that. I love that he was building something. He told me, that his time is the most precious thing. And spending that time with me was important. He wanted me around after work, even while doing that. And I supported him and started to lo love it. And now we have a zoo. What is your question, my love, Aisha? What is your question? What would you like to know? What would you like to know? I need the question. I need the question. I always need the question. How come I don't see, I don't see your box. Are you here? Is she here? Did she go? Is she gone? I know we don't know, do we? Okay. Um, let's, let's, does any, I see her. Oh, you do. Okay. Oh, I don't. All right. Aisha, what's your question, love? Why don't I see you? Where did you go? That's so weird. I'm going to play with this a little bit. Are you here? Is that 
Can you see her message? Uh, I don't see a reply. I don't see. Um, I'm still trying to trust him again after he confided more in his female friend. Ah, okay. Um, can you can you can you put this in? A, yes, I see it now. Um, so give me the question though. I need something with a question mark at the end. Um, just so that it, it just, it somehow it just, it, it puts me into like where I need to be. There you are, my love. I see you. Gorgeous. Um, I definitely need something with a question at the end. So the question is, how do I trust him again after he confided more in his female friend than he, he did in me? I'm going to, I'm going to put it this way. Um, <clears throat> can I bring you into a conversation, love? I only see a picture. You're going to have to say yes, because you got your video, or maybe we just bring you in on audio. Um, how do I trust him again? She disrespected boundaries, and so did he. Ooh, I want to dive into this. Can I bring you in on audio? Dance with me in my backyard. Because disrespect can be very, um, like that, that word can be very, uh, because sometimes what we feel is disrespectful is really just a bruise to our ego. Um, it's just, it's just a pain. It's just the whoosh. And the ego does not like to not be the king of the castle. Um, so... Uh, I, I really want to kind of dive into to, to defining what this disrespect was, what this behavior was that was disrespectful. Was it just the conversation? Was it, was it having a conversation about your problems with someone else rather than with you and that someone else um, being a female, especially, how do I trust him again? She disrespected boundaries. He put an end to the flirting, but she wasn't a fan of it. She called me insecure and jealous because he was flirting with her. And you didn't like that. That's not okay. Uh, give us some more details. Um, anything else you think is relevant. But what I see here is not okay. She should not have been flirting. Um, he talked about all of her problems to her instead of talking to me first. And so let me ask you this. Did any of those conversations end up with her giving him the kind of advice that would help your relationship? Because... You know, in fix that shit, never. So this is definitely problematic. So she is chasing after him. Yeah, she's chasing after him. He should not be having a friendship with somebody who wants to pull him away from you. Um, he can see that she's toxic. Is he still talking to her? Um, I think you have every right to ask him to cut that off because she is disrespectful. Like she is disrespectful. She does not respect your relationship because she's trying to pull it apart. She doesn't respect you. She's not even respecting him because he wants to be in a relationship with you, but she's doing everything she can to sabotage his relationship, which means she's not being a friend. She's looking to satisfy herself more than anything. Um, so I wonder how long you've been together for two years. Six months have been tough. Um, okay. So, no, one of her friends told him he needed to get rid of her or lose me. He hasn't talked to her since January. Okay, so now that's a long time. And he, he does deserve credit for that. I'm glad you were following my advice because this is effort. This is him acknowledging that there's a problem. This is him taking the right steps. Um, and so... If you vomit on his effort, he retracts his effort because where the brain goes is why should I do the right thing if the right thing doesn't work out for me? It's if, you know, I, I always use the, the analogy of taking food to the food bank. If you brought food to the food bank and you handed it over and they went, mm, no, <laughs> then you'd be less inclined to bring food to the food bank. Um, and so if you go, mm, to his efforts and you don't acknowledge them, then eventually he's like, why should I keep making these efforts? So you are on the right track because he has done the right thing. Um, I want you to keep following my advice. Did you get fixed that shit? Are you doing what's in, like, I know you're following my advice. Did you get fixed that shit so that you have the whole picture of what to do in order to really bring him close? The fact that he gave her up 
shows his dedication to you. Um, he, he cut out somebody that was being disruptive to your relationship and that shows, that does show a dedication to the relationship. Plenty of people out there. Um, one of our friends told him, okay, um, he's not happy he had to lose a friend. Um, you know, uh, so what, right? <laughs> like seriously, my answer to that is so what? Um, uh, you know, like if, if he lost a friend and the relationship was shit, then um, he'd be like, why did I sacrifice that and not get anything positive in return, right? Um, but I couldn't, I couldn't trust him when he said he loved me. I felt like he would do it again. Um, let's turn this around. So he's in the right space. He's doing the right thing. So we need to acknowledge that. We need to, to be like, you know, uh, baby, I want you to, to understand that I, I realized it was difficult letting go of somebody that you considered a friend. You can, you say considered a friend, right? Because that's the right wording because really at the bottom of it, she wasn't, if she wasn't supportive of what he wanted, if he wants a relationship with you and she's trying to sabotage that it's about her, not him. So that's not being a friend. So the right wording is, you know, baby, I understand that it was hard for you to let go of someone that you considered a friend. I want you to know that I appreciate that you you did that for our relationship. Um, I know that my imagination runs away on me, and that's on me. And I'm 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 gonna work on that, and I'm gonna make sure that I don't vomit into the relationship, and make sure that you understand that I am grateful that we are working on our relationship and we are making it better. And then you keep doing the right behaviors, and eventually, because time changes things, right? Like if you think about something that happened a year ago, if you go back in your memory to that particular thing, the emotion isn't as strong. Like if you, you might've felt it strongly then, but when you think about it, you still get some kind of emotion, but not as strongly as when you were in the moment. So time does kind of change emotions, right? So um, this, well, I mean, it was eight months ago. Uh, so, you know, if he's still upset about it, it's, it's because if, if the relationship isn't working out as, as amazingly as he would like it to, then his brain is saying, why did I give that up for something that isn't working out, right? If you turn this relationship into something beautiful and functional and what I like to call magical, so no fighting, just peace, just love, just support, um, then he forgets that he gave up something it doesn't feel like he sacrificed anything. It feels like he did the right decision because look at how this turned out. Look how amazing this is. This is everything I dreamt of. This is, this is everything I've seen in my role models. This is better than I've seen in other relationships because I see other people fight and bicker, but we don't do that. So if you can turn this into something really great, then this, this, um, you know, unhappiness that he lost a friend is going to fade away. Um, and do, the, so there's something called, you know, like, do, you don't have to trust him. I'm not, I'm not saying you're going to switch your emotions overnight. So you say, I couldn't trust him when he said he loved me, but I don't want you to vomit that on him. When he says, I love you, I want you to smile and say, I love you too, baby. And, and deal with your emotions yourself through meditation, through journaling, through writing a cheat sheet. We have a negative brain. It forgets the negative and or it forgets the positive and retains the negative. So turn that around. Write down the positive things he says and does. And when you find yourself going into a negative space about him, you can go back to that cheat sheet and you can remind yourself of the goodness. Yeah. They were friends for 10 years, but three of those, she's trying to break him and his ex up so she could have him. And now he's in a relationship with you. Um, yeah, so no more conversations with him about his friend um, because you not bringing it up anymore. Like confidence is the most attractive thing. So um, come to a place of confidence, even if it's outwardly before it's inwardly. 
and start projecting confidence. So you don't need to talk to her about, it, about her anymore because she's not an issue. I believe that you love me. I'm doing the right things. I, you know, I'm putting the right behaviors into this relationship, which is making us feel closer, which you indicated already in this chain when we were chatting, like in, in something that you said earlier. Um, I'm a mom. Let me see. Where's, I want, uh, so you said, um, so I started doing what Chantal suggested. My boyfriend still loves me. It seems he's starting to come around. He's starting to soften again. So keep doing what you're doing so that what you've created is going to grow and grow and grow. This, the softening is coming around. The softening is coming around. He's here. He loves you. He's working at it. He wants it to be good. It's just, they need us to show them how. They need us to be the leader. They need us to model the behavior. So the behavior is confidence. The behavior is we don't fight. We have talks instead that are productive because we're presenting solutions. So do grab a copy of Fix That Shit or go through all my TikToks. Um, I got a podcast too, a YouTube channel. If you want the free advice, it's all there. Come and get it. Um, but yeah, you have a this, you have a foundation because he's there and he's committed, and he is committed to making it work. So now it's uh, I've read fix that shit and read certain parts occasionally. Okay, so get back into it, my love. Um, do everything that is in there because all those little components, uh, all those little components add up to something, and it creates something really truly magical. Um, podcast on Spotify, yes, indeed. Yes, I do. Uh, link is in the link to my bio on, uh, on TikTok or on my Instagram. We talked about in March because he was worried about her. She has health issues and it reopened the womb, but not, to, not talked about her since March. Good. Aisha, I love you. You're brilliant. You really are. You really are. You're very strong. Honestly, super strong. Um, Okay, you guys, so I'm gonna, this is gonna be it for tonight. I love that we did this. I hope you guys got something out of it. Um, I hope you guys felt like this was worth the $2. And uh, like, I'll, I'll be doing more of these, but I love, I love it if you kind of said a little something about what you thought about this. Um, even if you have some feedback, some positive or negative, anything, I'm open to it. I'd love to hear it. Uh, Mari, you're really doing the most and give us so many tools to work through our problems. Thank you. Yes, love. Thank you. Uh, Aisha, I want to go to couples therapy, but he said that if we do, it's because we're dysfunctional and it means we will break up. His mom agreed. Ah. Um, was the No More Assholes course $20 off or was that another? It was $20 off, but that early bird special is now over. Sending up, by the way. Yay, good, good girl. I'm a new fan. Good, Trisha. Um, you will find, yeah, the No More Assholes course. The link is in link tree in my bio. I do hope to see you there. Um, it's going to be good. It's going to be super good. I'm really excited for it. I like how intimate the Zoom call was. Thank you. Yay, good. I appreciate that. I like that. Good. That makes me happy. Oh, good, good, good. Ah, oh, my say to goodness arrives tomorrow. Love that. So excited. I love it. This one was like, this is, I didn't even write this book. This was to the universe. It just went that. Um, so that was really interesting. I want to do this again. Aisha, good, good. Oh, that makes me feel good. Okay, good. Definitely we will do this again then. Most, most definitely we will absolutely do this again. I love this. I appreciate, very much appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for your questions. Thank you for taking part in this. Thank you for your feedback. I really appreciate that. Um, I, you know, I love you. I'm looking at all your beautiful faces. I really, truly love you guys. You really are amazing. I'm loving your smiles. Yay. Oh, my ladies. Thank you. You're so welcome. Thank you for doing this and the advice. Thank you, Trisha, Aisha. Yay, Katie. You're so welcome. I really need to hear uh, the right things and he's not a true piece of shit. <laughs> he tries. Does not sound like a true piece of shit at all, my love. Good. Keep doing the right things. All right, ladies. I love you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I see you. I love you. I adore you. Um, I will see you again. Okay. Have a good night, you guys.